starting now. Commonalities, where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. Politics, religion, finances, all the topics your grandmother told you not to discuss with friends. And now, your host, Matthew Dowling, and today's guests on Commonalities. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Commonalities. I'm your host, Matt Dowling, here on WMBS 590 AM 101.1 FM and every place you download your favorite podcasts. My guest today is Damian Andrews. He's a consultant that has a lot of experience in kind of getting into the nitty gritty, figuring out what problems are with very large organizations and helping to rectify them. Damian, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself so my guests get to know you. Yeah, g'day, Matt. Pleasure to be here. Uh, g'day from Australia for, for those of you wondering where I'm from and why, why the g'day. <laughs> yeah, my, my background, you know, I um, had a bit of a mixed background and, and probably from other people's perspective as well, you know, just to give give the detail my my parents you know broke up when i was in started high school uh which kind of affected my life and and i'm sure a lot of people have experienced that where you know they their life is a bit turned upside down when that happens and as a result of that i was very good at school i was you know, you know getting straight a's effectively uh, and then after that my my Education sort of went downhill a little bit. I, I, I kind of lost my way a little bit. And the later part of, of high school, um, before college, I think it is in America that you have, uh, I didn't really want to be at school. My dad said I wasn't allowed to have a job. I uh, wasn't allowed to have uh, leave school unless I had a job. And so I um, said, uh, well, he said, yeah, you can't leave school unless you've got a job. About a couple of weeks later, the army recruitment people uh, came around to our school. And I thought that sounds like a good option to get out of school. And I joined the army. As a result of that, I ended up at the the actual I ended up at the the special air service regiment, which is you know, Australia's special forces equivalent of your I think the Green Berets or, or what you have in America. Um, so I got to do a lot of things like jumping out of airplanes and rappelling into cl- um, to caves and, and all sorts of things like that. And my dad says that the army sort of sorted me out a little bit, and it, it probably did, uh, but I did have some good foundations from my parents as well, uh, uh, some good character foundations as to some disciplines and things like Like, for example, when I got into the army and in basic training, I could already fold, make my bed in, in army style. I could fold it to – that's how my mum insisted I make the bed, so I had a bit of discipline there. Uh, after doing that, I went in um, – so I did my time in the army. I got out. Uh, I was a bit lost again, not really you know, knowing what to do. Um, so, you know, had pretty good income in the in the army, but didn't really save any of that. And when I got out, I was uh, fluffing around, wasn't doing much. Uh, a friend said there's good money up in the mine sites in northwestern Australia. Like, That's great. And I, 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 thought, I really wanted to get a job there, and, and I was – pretty insistent about it and what I did and this was back in the days before I didn't have a computer back then um so and so this is going back quite a, a, a bit of time I'm a bit older than I look and I um I wrote a letter handwritten wrote a letter to I found out who were the main contractors the companies the construction companies working up there and I wrote a letter to them every day so I think there was six six companies and I hand wrote a letter every day and after two weeks one of them called me up and said you you seem pretty keen we'll, we'll bring you in for an interview <laughs> and uh, I got an interview uh, and I got the job and I went and worked up in northwest Australia and earned a, a lot of money up there which was was great but then I got a bit homesick after that came back to um uh, to Melbourne which is back on the other side of the country um so the equivalent of going from you know LA to New York and I, again, I was fluffing around a little bit, worked in a little bit of real estate. Um, I was a ballroom dance teacher for a little bit and did a, a number of different things. And then I, I decided this education thing that my dad was harping on about when I was in, in high school was probably a good idea. And so I went back to um, university or college in, in your vernacular and studied commerce and accounting 
And from there, I worked in corporate recovery for about eight years. So doing, um, finding, essentially, for, for those who remember the movie Pretty Woman, I was basically, you know, Richard Gere breaking up company, taking over and breaking up companies and selling them off. That, that's how I like to, to describe it. Maybe I didn't look as good, but, you know, <laughs> that, that was the kind of thing that we did. <laughs> the the and, question is, did you get the woman? <laughs> we won't go there because uh, you know, <laughs> this, this, um, I, I did have I did have some very lovely girlfriends um, <laughs> throughout my my life, um, and then I tra- from there I, I moved into doing consulting for myself. So I, I started consulting in the corporate recovery space, and then that transitioned more into working with a, a lot of large construction companies which is where I still still work. Um, so I still work with a lot of large construction companies, but I um, also have brand, do a fair bit with manufacturing and, and other, other other companies, and we find you know, ways to make the companies more efficient. And especially in today's environment, work with making companies uh, an employer of choice because it's difficult to find with labour shortages that exist and skills shortages that exist, it's difficult to find uh, employees. So how do we make the company more attractive for employees to want to not only stay uh, to come there but to stay there as well? So that's, that's and pretty and much these what are I do. large corporations. These are yes. large companies or organizations uh, doing annual revenue of eighty million plus, or uh, no, they're billions. So we're working with oh, billions. National, okay, yeah, national and multinational company. One of the companies I worked with. Um, this was going back eight years ago. It was it was doing eight hundred million, and it was it was goal was to get over the billion turnover. Yeah, so big big companies with you know, tens of thousands of employees. Sure. Now, your personal financial journey, as uh, as we were talking before we got on the the show, was that you were uh, making money but not really saving money and investing. And on our show, we like to talk about all of the hard issues: money, politics, religion. Um, yeah. And so, we wanted to have you on the show to kind of discuss with our listeners um, what approach you took to you know, actually putting some of that money in the bank and what were some of the good uh, financial steps that you took and and how did you stay disciplined and, and continue down that road? Yeah, that, that's a very good point there. And, and yes, I, I must say all the money I earned went in the bank, but then a lot of it, pretty much all of it come back out again, certainly in my early days. Um, and that's part of, I always had this philosophy that, well, I don't know if philosophy is the right word, but I always wanted to have a lot of money. And I, I certainly, when I was working in the army, I was on a, a reasonable wage. It wasn't, you know, super great, but it was, it was good, certainly for my age. But, you know, I didn't really have as much as I thought I wanted to have um, to money. I, I really, it wasn't who I was. And this is something that I, I work with people and with companies on is it's not so much whether you have the goal, it's whether who you are, your identity is congruent with that goal. Because a lot of times we say we want to do things and we set all these goals, but our our unconscious isn't aligned that way. And this is one of the things a lot of people, I, from my experience, don't know, is that when we act, an action, is, well, we, we know, but we don't know that it's linked to your goals. It's like when you when you act, if you were to pick up that coffee cup on your, your desk there, you don't consciously think about how to pick it up. It's an unconscious action. And... When we set goals and our our goals are not aligned with our identity, exactly what you're doing now, you didn't consciously think about that as you picked up that cup of coffee. You unconsciously thought about it. And we have, I think we've all had that experience where we've thought we've understood something, then we've gone to do it and we haven't done it very well. And then there's other times where we've had an experience where we thought we didn't understand it. And then we surprised ourselves how well we did which is to know something is a conscious function, but to do something is an unconscious function. This is where the military is very, that's why military has the the drills that it does. It drills into you to, when something happens, you react a certain way um, because that's an unconscious action. And for a large part of my life, as much as I wanted money, I had this goal of having money, having lots of money. I didn't actually have the unconscious uh, identity of having money. So it was always, you know, earning money. And, and when I worked in the, the mine sites, for example, I earned a, a lot of money up there. 
Um, but a, a lot of it just went because I didn't have this unconscious persona of holding on to that money. And then when I changed that, when I changed to the unconscious, it becomes, it's not about discipline. Discipline runs out. Uh, willpower runs out. It, it takes effort. You get tired and you don't do it. When you actually, your identity is that of a person that has money, it just becomes something that you do as much as just picking up a cup of coffee, um, you know, you, whatever your normal routine might be, that you get up, you do something, you have a shower, what, whatever that standard routine is your normal day, it becomes your normal day. It's not something you have to think about. It's not something you have to put effort in. And it doesn't matter what level of income you are because I've, I've gone through many times having lots of income and having no income. Um, but once you've got that identity there, it automatically happens because having money um, is is quite simple. Most things in life are quite simple. We just overly complicate it. An example, when we think about it, if you think about the, um, there's one great book called uh, The Richest Man in Babylon, which is by George S. Carlson, which is written nearly 100 years ago. If you haven't read that book, um, for the listeners, grab, grab the book. It's a simple read. But it, it outlines three key steps to have money, to have wealth. One is to you know have a surplus from whatever it is you earn. It doesn't matter how much you earn, you have a surplus from that. You take that surplus and you invest it. And the income from that investment, you reinvest. Now, those are pretty simple instructions. You know, it's not, that's not hard. What it is, is the reason we make it difficult is our identity is linked to doing that. And that's where you need to change your unconscious um, thinking so that that becomes part of your identity. And then all of a sudden that becomes just a natural process. And I know people, um, a friend of mine uh, many years ago, she was uh, extremely on a very, very low income. She had a child to look after. The dad had left. Um, and she had saved $40,000. Um, how she did that, I have no idea because she didn't, you know, she didn't earn that much money, but her identity was, I need this money to have as a security for my, to look after my child. And she just, just made it happen. And it wasn't a big effort. Um, whereas, you know, the, and on the other side of things with earning money, the, the other part of that rule. So there's the three parts to, to accumulating wealth, the, the, the very, the, the, the part to earning money, and there's one part to that is add value. And that's especially in today's environment where there's a, a, a labor shortage. Uh, I, I tell the, the joke of the two people walking in the jungle and a lion jumps out. And one person starts putting on their running shoes and the other person says, why are you doing that? You can't outrun the lion. And the other the person putting on their shoes says, I don't have to outrun the lion. I just got to outrun you. Um, and this is in today's environment. It's not that hard to be better than the competition out there. It's as an employee, um, an example is uh, for someone, for example, let's say you, you put in an extra hour's work a day in the office. What that results to, it, it's not an extra hour in pay. It's a 40% increase in your salary. So for an extra hour, which is not, you know, that's not a 40% increase in your, your daily work. Um, but then if you add to that being working smarter as opposed to working harder, you can actually, that hour, you can compress into 10 minutes and do what most people can do in an hour. You can do in 10 minutes if you're efficient about it and get that 40% increase in salary. Um, there, there's all these things that you can do and, and things that I, I've learned to do uh, over my, my life. But it, really having the money is quite easy. It's that process of making it unconscious within your mind. And when you, when you do that, it's, it just happens naturally as, as naturally as it is for you walking down the street. Sure. Sure. So Damien, we have to get to our first break today, uh, but we're talking a little bit about finances and the discipline it takes um, to, you know, save a little bit in the bank. Um, so we'll continue this conversation after this brief message. You're listening to Commonalities, where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. We'll be back after this brief break to recognize our sponsors. Founded in 1991, Bright Stripe has succeeded on the premises of quality work, done right at an affordable cost. At Bright Stripe, personal service has always been a must. We strive to be the premier asphalt sealing and striping company in the region. 
Matt George, the owner of Bright Stripe LLC, brings experience from his construction and maintenance company, Mountain Creek Construction and Maintenance. Matt has provided excellent customer service to many happy businesses and homeowners. Bright Stripe is the premier provider of seal coating, or pavement sealing, the process of applying a protective coating to asphalt-based pavements to provide a layer of protection from the elements, water, oils, and UV damage. They also specialize in driveway and parking lot crack sealing. Crack sealing is the process of applying a protective coating to asphalt-based pavements. Bright Stripe also abides by all safety laws and standards in line striping and layout. For a no-obligation estimate, contact Bright Stripe at 724-437-6090. Is your business using analog strategies in a digital marketing world? If so, then contact Matthew or Rebecca Dowling at Coordinated360 for a professional consultation, where we bring in-depth knowledge and functional expertise with a holistic perspective. Coordinated360 provides digital marketing, paid ad and media buying services, web design, social media management, video production, and more for businesses, organizations, and political campaigns. With decades of experience, Matt and Becky at Coordinated360 can help you craft your unique message and share it with the world. For a no-risk media evaluation and recommendations, call 724-320-2212 or visit us online at www.coordinated360.com. Find us also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter or email info at coordinated360.com. Are you enjoying the program you're listening to? Support Commonalities and help keep us on the air by making a donation of $5, 10 or $25 or any amount you feel comfortable sharing online at donate.commonalities.online. Again, that is donate.commonalities.online on the World Wide Web. Buy our host a cup of coffee or help pay for airtime at donate.commonalities.online. Thanks for staying with us on Commonalities. I'm your host, Matt Dowling, here on WMBS 590 AM, 101.1 FM, and any place you download your favorite podcasts. My guest today is Damian Andrews, and uh, Damian is from Australia. Uh, he's talking to us a little bit about uh, his financial journey throughout life. And uh, Damian, you know, through my uh, connections, the people that I've known, I've known people that have made, uh, you know, good six-figure salaries, uh, yet they've been cash poor. Uh, mm. And then I've known people that make thirty-five or forty thousand dollars a year, and they seem to have money in the bank. Um, you know, why is that? Is there really no difference in difficulty uh, to save? You know, regardless of the income level you're at. Yeah, again, I think that really does come back to that perception of, of where you see yourself at and what is your, your motivation. I mean, you look at, you know, Warren Buffett's a great example. Um, you know, Warren Buffett's income's, you know, off the charts, yet he still lives in a, a modest home. He lives, you know, drives a, a modest car. He, he doesn't need to do, um, spend all this money. So he, he as he says, he has simple needs. Um and I think that's the difference between people that that accumulate money and the ones that don't. It's not income. I, I know some uh, some people that earn a substantial amount of money, um, and they they don't. I mean, they they spend a bit, but they don't spend everything they've got. Um, the, their philosophy again is is about having a, a friend who I had lunch with yesterday. Um, He's, he's retired. He's, he's not old. Um, you know, he, he's retired. Um, he was showing me this old Packard that he's got 1930s five Packard. He's, he's got seven collectible cars, which are, you know, these beautiful things. And, and he spends his day. There's what we have here is, um, it's, it's called the variety bash and you've got a, it's, it's a rally, a car rally. Um, with with old vintage cars, and you, it raises the the process is to raise money um, for a, a, ch a kids charity, and um, I think there's a, it was a NASCAR driver that has a ride across America that has a similar sort of thing where it's a it's a uh, it's a ride to raise money for for um, for children, so a similar sort of thing, but he's you know he's 
income. It never looked like he had, you know, I've, I've known him for 15 years, 15 to 18 years. And it never looked like he had, um, you know, a substantial uh, amount of, of that he was accumulating a st- substantial amount of wealth. He, did, he wasn't you know, flashy in, in where he lived and things like that. But now his life, he's retired. Him and his wife live between Australia and London. So they spend half their time in Australia, half their time in London. Um, they fly you know, business or first class, you know, and that's a long trip and not a cheap trip, um, you know, regularly backwards and forwards between Australia and London. He has his seven you know, collectible cars. They've got... Um, they, you know, we've got a couple of Teslas, which you know, one in each country that they use as their, their everyday cars. Um, a couple of uh, properties, and and that was his thing. He, he he accumulated these items that earned money. That was his focus. Um, he, his needs were. It wasn't about. Um, I, I I do wonder whether it's about this need to impress people. Um, and but he was happy in his own self and what he wanted to do. He didn't need stuff to um, to have. I guess it, it comes down to that delayed gratification as well. He what he didn't spend everything. He, I mean, he had fun. I know when I knew him, he, he'd go out and have fun, but he didn't spend everything. Um, everything that he had, he had a, a, a an idea of what he wanted long term. So maybe that was the difference as well. Having this long term plan that he wanted to have um, this set up. And again, you know, that so, un- oh, go ahead. I was going to say again that unconscious behavior as well. It was a you know it was just something that he did naturally because it wasn't something that he had um, uh, to to put a lot of effort into. It wasn't a lot of discipline. I, I do think that uh, that to get to that unconscious behavior, um, you have to consciously innate yourself to that practice, just like they teach you the drills in the military. Um, yeah. You know, you may not be familiar with them at the be- at the beginning, but it becomes second nature by the end. You used Correct. Warren Buffett as uh, as a example a couple minutes ago, and I recently read a uh, profile of Warren Buffett. I believe it was in um, in the Wall Street Journal or in the Business Times, one of those uh, publications. And uh, whether you know this or not, Warren Buffett goes to McDonald's for breakfast every single morning. That's right. Um, Yeah. And, you know, people people would think, well, maybe that's a a little bit frivolous to eat out. Um, But Warren has one menu item that he gets. He gets a uh, sausage and cheese McMuffin, no egg because the egg is an extra 20 or 30 cents. Um, <laughs> and he doesn't get a coffee because there's coffee brewing at the office. So why pay for overpriced coffee, he says. Um, yeah. And one day a week, he treats himself to the egg on the sandwich. He allows <laughs> him to put the egg on. But the other days of the week, he eats no egg because, you know, that's 20, 30 cents. The man has uh, has billions of dollars. He has basically mm. uh, unlimited money, uh, as we would think of it. But he's concerned about 20 or 30 cents a day that he is able to save. And um, and that has to come to him innately. It has to be second nature that, you know, I'm just I'm not going to not going to uh, to spend that. You know, I, I think of uh, of my own thought process. And I wish that there were times when I was that disciplined, um, you know, when I go out to eat, which uh which is relatively often, uh, I'll think to myself, man, you know, I've really worked hard for this. I should reward myself and get a a super, an appetizer. Well, there I've just added eight to $10 onto my meal. And if I do it, my wife and kids are probably going to follow lead and do the same thing. (laughs) And automatically we've added $40 to the tab for dinner that evening, Um, you know, because there's four of us. You know, so I I think there has to be a mindset that has to click for the individual. Um, it's it's a different way of thinking, and uh, you know I don't I don't know if you agree with that, and and if you did, if if you could expand on that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's something that I teach uh, people within the organisations I work with because the aim is to get you know people to work from 
and unconscious behavior, which is creating habits, which comes down to beliefs as well. And, and Wayne Dyer described, you know, he said a belief is just a thought that you've repeated over and over again. What we don't realize, um, and, and I think, well, I think what we don't really appreciate is how easy it is to change a belief or how easy it is to change thinking. It really, I mean, and you've probably read somewhere, I mean, the book Atomic, Atomic Habits, there's a number of books on habits, and they roughly always talk about it takes about a month to change a habit. Now, when you look at it, you know, and, and the reason they say it's a month is it's an action repeated 28 times, roughly. And once you start do that 28 times, that, that thinking process in your, your unconscious thinking process has made a significant change. Um, so you don't have to do it once a day. You could do it three times a day. So you reduce it from 28 days you know, to a third of that. And it's, it's that process of going, okay, I want to change it. And yes, the, the first bit is like, like drill. You know, in, in the army, when I was in the army and, and, you know, I use that as an example when I'm working with people is, you know, you need to, you, it's good to have a coach with you or someone where, you know, like you're, you're married, um, you can work with your wife and say, and you, you, you remind each other at the start, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is the big objective. Um, and that's where if you, if you go to my website, there's a free downloadable, which shows partly how to do this. Um, it's, and we set, I, I have, you know, we set goals in three areas. One is your finances. The second is, you know, your learning type goals. And the third is your fun goals. And you, you focus on what are the, because often, and Warren Buffett does this as well. He says, make a list of everything that you want to do um, and then cross everything off except the, the, the top five and only focus on that. And similar sort of thing. I, I only have two. So, well, I have six, two in each category. And when you get, so when you work with someone like your wife or someone like that, you say, okay, we're going to, this is following that, that downloadable on my website, um, damienandrews.com. If you go, um, if you work with your, your partner or whoever someone is significant to you for that first part, like in the army with, with drill, you had a sergeant that was saying, um, you will do this, you will do this. And you didn't have a choice. And then all of a sudden it became that habit. And if you do that together, you can actually create this change very quickly where it then becomes um, uh, an unconscious habit and then you're you're doing that just naturally. It doesn't require discipline because the other thing that I teach people is you've got to remember anything that you do, procrastination, people talk, oh, I'm procrastinating, not achieving a goal. Well, no, no, you're not. In that moment, if you're binging, binge watching Netflix, that's because that's what you want to be doing in that moment in time that's your focus i want to binge watch netflix your unconscious is you know that's where you if you can set that up so you have these triggers you 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 are then you've got this trigger that says ah oh, i'm binge watching here that means i'm focusing on binge watching i'm not focusing on my goal you bring yourself back to the goal if you've got someone to work with to then create that you can actually make that happen really really quickly um, and then it becomes easy well, Damien, we have to get to our next break, uh, but we'll be back in just a minute. We're talking with Damien Andrews today here on Commonalities about uh, his financial journey, and uh, hopefully you can glean some advice from, uh, from his story in a way to live a healthier financial life. We'll be right back. You're listening to Commonalities where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. We'll be back after this brief break to recognize our sponsors. Hello, Uniontown. Mayor Bill Gerke here. There's nothing quite like the feeling of home, that sense of belonging, those fall Friday nights under the lights, those winter nights in the gym watching our Red Raiders, those refreshing spring afternoons at Bailey Park rooting on our Red Raider softball and baseball teams. I am grateful for those memories and hope our community's children and grandchildren can enjoy those memories too. But to do that, we have to plan for the future. During my first term in office, the city has got Bailey Park back to a place where we can be proud of. Begun our city's first comprehensive plan in over 20 years. Started work on the city's section of the Sheepskin Trail. Worked on eliminating blighted properties and are rebuilding the city's neighborhoods. We've updated the faulty equipment in the parking garages 
and we're bringing a more competitive, reliable, faster, and less expensive internet service to our city residents. We have done a lot, but there's still more to do. So I, Bill Gerke, am running for a second term. We're Uniontown proud, we're Uniontown strong, and together we can continue to rebuild Uniontown for the next generation. Paid for by Mayor Bill Gerke. When it comes to buying a home, what you see isn't exactly what you get. That's why home buyers should call Dave Dowling at Grandview Inspections at 724-208-4108. You'll see colorful flowers, freshly painted walls, granite countertops, gleaming hardwood floors and other touches. What you can't see is the cracks, ancient plumbing, dangerous wiring, or broken appliances that might be revealed when you hire a home inspector. And when it comes to home inspectors, knowing yours has the qualifications and experience needed should be your number one concern. Dave Dowling with Grandview Inspections is an architectural engineer with over 30 years of commercial construction experience and hundreds of inspections under his belt. A home inspection is an opportunity for you to hire an expert to walk through the home and prepare a report outlining the home's major components, what needs immediate attention, and what will require maintenance after you move in. Your home is one of your biggest investments, so make sure your investment is everything you hoped it to be. Call Dave Dowling at Grandview Inspections at 724-208-4108. Are you enjoying the program you're listening to? Support Commonalities and help keep us on the air by making a donation of $5, 10 or $25 or any amount you feel comfortable sharing online at donate.commonalities.online. Again, that is donate.commonalities.online on the World Wide Web. Buy our host a cup of coffee or help pay for airtime at donate.commonalities.online. Thanks for staying with us here on Commonalities. I'm your host, Matt Dowling. You're listening to 590 WMBS 101.1 FM and any place you download your favorite podcast. My guest today is Damian Andrews, a consultant from Australia, who is talking about his financial journey and uh, how he consciously chose to train himself to make unconscious decisions that would better himself um, financially and to help himself reach all of his goals, not just financial goals, but uh, his goals for how he wants to live his life and how to have fun. Damien, thanks for being with us on the program today. Um, we talked a little bit in the last segment about your website and the resources you have there. And I just wanted to uh, discuss that a little bit more and have you shout out that URL again for our listeners so that they know how to uh, contact you or how to find some of the resources that you've been talking about during this program. Yeah, definitely. I mean, my website, if you Google my name, Damien Andrews, I mean, I'm all over the front page of Google. I think I'm every link now on the front page of Google. But uh, and, and with the information that's, <clears throat> excuse me, on the website, so there is a free downloadable which talks about how to set goals. And one of the things I wanted to expand on that is, you know, we're all told, you know, work smarter, don't work harder. And from a financial perspective, you know, uh, I was doing probably the opposite of that. And, you know, we've, you've had people will tell you, you know, spend less than you earn. And I was doing that. I was trying to do that. And that's that to me, to be honest, really sucked because it, it involves all this discipline and, and things like for those of you who can see the video, there's a there's a Lego bat wing up here and, and I have a, a le massive Lego collection. I, I love it, a huge amount. But if I was spending less than I earned, I wouldn't be able to do that. And I decided, to, you know, taking it from the perspective of thinking uh, working smarter I changed it to let's, um, why don't I earn more than I spend? 
So I changed my thinking from I'm going to spend less than I earn to earn more than I spend, which then changed the whole process within your mind because within your mind you have your reticular activating system, which I explain in that, that downloadable how that works. That filters what you see. All of a sudden I saw all these other opportunities to earn extra money. And it's amazing how many times when things got a little bit rough that other things came into my life where I earned money to fill that gap and still be able to, to buy that Lego uh, because I was earning more than I was spending. And that's where that makes, a, again, a difference. Working smarter than harder is something if we, again, do from an unconscious perspective, we open the doors to all these different things. So that those things are available on my website. And we are here in the month of January when a lot of people, um, at least in the United States, set goals and resolutions for the coming year. So this would be a great time to visit Damien's website, get that downloadable and uh, and set those goals. And then each month, um, you know, maybe on the 1st or on the 15th, kind of reevaluate where you are and are you keeping to those goals um, but this could be a way of making uh, yourself a very productive 2023 um, and, and getting started here on the right foot during the month of January. Damien, we have just about two minutes left in our program for today. I wanted to give you the opportunity to share your final thoughts with our listeners. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you for having me on the show. It's been a, a pleasure being here. Feel free. Uh, I normally work with large corporations, but I do allocate time to work with individuals. So if there are any, any uh, people out there that do want to work with me, feel free to contact me through my website and, and I'll you know work something out to, to help you out. And um, yeah, just remember, life doesn't have to be hard. It, it actually is quite simple if you can train your unconscious to just do things as a matter of a habit as simple as when you normally go for a walk down the road. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, here in the, uh, the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area, we, uh, we're very familiar with Mr. Rogers. I don't know if you've ever seen, uh, his program over in Australia. Uh, but Mr. Rogers, uh, one of the things he said was, um, that it is uh, better to live a life that is deep and simple than a uh, life that is complex. And, and I think we have the ability to make that choice. Uh, you know, I want to thank our listeners for tuning into Commonalities today. I'm your host, Matt Dowling. My guest has been Damian Andrews. Damian, one more time, why don't you shoot out the URL for your website so that people can contact you before we sign off today? Definitely. You can contact me at Damian Andrews, D A M I A N Andrews.com, or just Google. Damien Andrews, and you'll find my link. Uh, you'll find my LinkedIn profile there. Uh, you can contact me via the email on the website, or I even have a US number you can call. Uh, so feel free to, to reach out. I'm, I'd be more than happy to have a chat with you. Well, thank you so much for being on the program today, Damien. You have a good day. Thank you. Pleasure being here. This has been Commonalities, a show where guests find common ground through uncommon conversations. Copyright 2022, Coordinated 360. All public rebroadcasts should be done with prior written approval from Matthew Dowling. All requests should be sent to info at coordinated360.com. Thank you for listening to Commonalities. Hello, Uniontown. Mayor Bill Gerke here. There's nothing quite like the feeling of home, that sense of belonging, those fall Friday nights under the lights, those winter nights in the gym watching our Red Raiders, those refreshing spring afternoons at Bailey Park rooting on our Red Raider softball and baseball teams. I am grateful for those memories and hope our community's children and grandchildren can enjoy those memories too. But to do that, we have to plan for the future. During my first term in office, the city has got Bailey Park back to a place where we can be proud of. Begun our city's first comprehensive plan in over 20 years. Started work on the city's section of the Sheepskin Trail. Worked on eliminating blighted properties and are rebuilding the city's neighborhoods. We've updated the faulty equipment in the parking garages and we're bringing a more competitive, reliable, faster and less expensive internet service to our city residents. We have done a lot, but there's still more to do. So I, Bill Gerke, am running for a second term. We're Uniontown proud, 
We're Uniontown strong, and together we can continue to rebuild Uniontown for the next generation. Paid for by Mayor Bill Gerke.